becoming a master at what you do. A samurai, perhaps. Salespeople put a great deal of attention on mastering how they speak. But our next guest says that the best salespeople are also masters at listening. Teresa Jabour is a senior consultant with Mark Kamen and Associates. She joins us now to talk about what it really means to listen in a conversation. Thanks very much for being here. My pleasure. A lot of people sell whether or not they do it for a living. They sell their ideas in a company. And you've got this notion of what listening is. Aren't we doing that all the time? Aren't we just listening as a function of daily living? We're absolutely listening all the time. And there are two ways that we listen. Okay. So one way we listen is we listen through a filter of what we already know. Or maybe you could say what we're concerned about. Okay. So there's an automatic way we listen. And then there's a way that we can actually create listening. Okay, so let's use the sales context. I'm a sales rep selling boxes of detergent. I go in to meet my, my buyer. What is the automatic way of listening that I could have? What are some potential ways? Well, it could be, uh, you know, this guy's probably not going to buy very much today. Mm -hmm. It could be, gee, you know, my manager's really on my back. I better meet my quota. Right. So I better sell this. Yeah. It could be, you know, gee, I feel like, uh, you know, I've put on a few pounds. I hope they don't notice. And it when, could be anything. When you say listening, how, what, is there another way to describe that? Is it kind of, is it like the commentary in your head? How do we know what listening is? Yeah, it's, it is the commentary in your head. And, you know, Bruce, just to give you an example of powerful listening, you know, if you're ever at dinner with somebody, like a friend, mm. and uh, at a certain point in the conversation, there's no more you and no more other person over there. There's just this conversation that's happening. Mm. So you're in sync with the other person. You're in a dance with the other person. You're more over there, actually, than you are over here. And you're saying that it is possible for the sales rep to have that kind of dance, that kind of conversation with their buyer. Absolutely. How? Well, it's a question of, first of all, noticing the conversations that are not having you be over there. Okay. So first of all, you notice all these stray conversations, and then you let them go. Now, but really what I think is important is before every meeting, go in with an intention. So if I go in, if I'm selling you something, and I go into the conversation asking myself, who is this person I'm meeting with? What are they committed to? How can I forward what they're committed to? Then chances are my listening will be where it needs to be rather than with my concerns and myself. Now, a lot of people would say they would go into a meeting, be it a sales meeting or any meeting, and what they have in their head, as you call it, the automatic listening, it's just reality. It's yes. the way the world is. Yes. You would probably disagree with that. Well, I don't know that I would disagree with it, but I know that it's absolutely possible to let those thoughts go. Okay, gotcha. So the idea that you can't have it be any other way is what you disagree with. Yeah, oh, absolutely. It's absolutely possible. See, right now I'm creating what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I'm also creating how I'm listening to you. So how are you listening to me? I'm listening to you as a friend, I'm yeah. listening to you as somebody I'm interested in. I'm listening to you as somebody I'm in a conversation with. Right. So I'm actually with you rather than in here. And tell me how the, the listening then translates to the speaking. What's the link between what you hear and then what comes out of your mouth next? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, really what the link is, is that you are in sync. So if you're really over there and listening, you... It, you will know what to say next because it will completely be coordinated with what you've just listened to. And uh, basically, I mean, I keep saying this, but you're over there. And that's, that's how you're going to know what to say to forward your intention, not by being over here. Right. I mean, have you ever been in a situation where you were like in here? Sure, sure, absolutely. And, and I, it's interesting because I've been in that situation where I have been in the other person's world and able to understand them completely. I've also been in the position where I had the greatest intention, I was all set for the meeting, and then something happened where I lost the intention and the quota and the pressure and the time that that person, you know, didn't buy my 10 cases of detergent, all of a sudden flared up again. Yes. What do you do when that happens? Well, what you do is you notice it and you let it go. And then you ask yourself, who is this person and how can I forward what they're up to? How mm. can I be of service to them today?
When it comes to selling, I mentioned off the top that we sell not only detergent, but people sell ideas in a meeting. They want to sell their boss to give them a raise, those types of things. And one of the biggest risks, it seems to me, or ways that this gets derailed, is that people take things personally. Yes. How do we not do that? And I say we, because it's, it's ubiquitous. Yes. How do we not do that? Well, I think it starts with uh, noticing when you are taking it personally and letting it go, letting go of the fact that it's personal. And then, you know, I, I think it's a question of practice. So mm. once you're aware of the fact that you take things personally, you can actually practice not taking things personally. And if you really want to have fun, you could take somebody in your life and yeah. you could say, okay, say some things to me that might that I might take personally <gasps> so that I Oh my God. So that I can practice yeah. just, you know, listening to what you have to say and not being offended by it. And it, it you create an ability to have it be water off the duck's back as the saying goes. Absolutely. Fascinating. Yeah. Teresa, thanks for being here. Thank you. Teresa Jabor is a senior consultant with Mark Kamen and Associates.